So good afternoon and welcome back everyone. I am Sharon, your co your host for the session. Uh, for those who are, for those who are uh, you are uh, joining just now for the session, the recordings of the previous session are available on Discord as well as Hype. So do check it out. Uh, just before getting started, I'd like to remind you that uh, you will have the chance to raise questions during the presentation to the speaker. You have to just put it in the chat box. We'll be addressing them at the end of the session in the Q&A session. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Jayesh Parashar Sir. Uh, Jayesh Parashar Sir has worked around the globe for various clients in the finan financial services sector and has an experience of more than 24 years. He is a physics teacher by passion and has been associated with quantum computing for, for years. He is also an IBM QuizKit advocate who loves to learn, share, discuss new concepts of quantum computing. So without any further delay, I'd like to uh, hand it over to you, sir. So please take over. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, no, let me just share my presentation. So let me just put it on the presentation mode. And uh, sorry, Dr. Uh, Gandhi, I, I wasn't able to use your uh, format because uh, I was keep on getting, uh, you know, some error saying, saying no, no issues at all, Jayesh. No problem. <laughs> you can go. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I hope uh, is my entire screen visible because I see only a part of it visible. Let me just adjust it. Just give me a moment. Okay. Oh, probably my second monitor is connected, so let me just take it off. So now, uh, hopefully, my screen is visible and, and full screen mode. Yeah, it's fine, Jay. You can start. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I, uh, as uh, my name is Jayesh Parashar, and I, I thank you again for the for the kind introduction. In today's session, we are uh, basically going to, uh, you know, talk about uh, two things. One is the quantum mechanics. I'm gonna give a brief introduction to quantum mechanics. Uh, we'll see how it has, how the different rules in quantum mechanics have evolved over the time, especially in in last one century and then how it is important in in the quantum computing that that you are uh, you know studying in this fall fest event and then the other thing that uh, i'm going to cover in the in the next half or uh, the second half of this session is uncertainty principle so the uncertainty principle probably everyone is aware of uh, delta x delta p thing but it is more than that it is a uh, you know something uh, that has a very deep meaning so we'll see like you know how uh, we can in, in fact even implement it in Cascade and play around it and see like how nature works. So here is the agenda and uh, I'm just uh, trying to enable a pointer so I can point you at the, at the right position. So hopefully you are able to, to see Okay, uh, I, I think it looks good. So, so we uh, let let me go through the agenda quickly. We are just going to look at the uh, at a basic definition of computer and computation. Then I'm gonna cover like the differences between classical and quantum physics uh, based on the the objects they describe best. Then, uh, well, I will cover a brief history of quantum mechanics uh, and and couple of slides. And then I will look at the key concepts of quantum mechanics, those we use in quantum computing. And then we'll jump to, uh, you know, understanding more about the probability and chances. Uh, then I'll present you an like, you know, imaginary exotic coin. Uh, with the help of that coin, we'll try to understand the uncertainty principle. Uh, then at the end, like, uh, you know, I'll give you a clue on how you could implement uh, or see Heisenberg uncertainty principle in the casket, uh, uh, you know, how you see it in action in the casket, and then uh, we'll conclude the session with, with question and answers. Uh, 
so coming to the very first slide uh, you know a computer as we define whether it's a like quantum computer or classical computer or computer based on some other set of rules uh, a good computer uh, should be able to transform information and uh, one thing we have to remember is information is physical so i'll come back to that but a, a a good computer should be able to store and process information and it should be able to do so in a in a definite time it should not take like you know days or or years to compute something and the other good other property for a good computer to have is the universality so you we should be able to port any problem and present any problem in in such a way that like computer could understand it so the, our input should be in you know such a way that we can port any problem to uh, as an input to that computer and it should be uh, able to calculate output accordingly now computation is a uh, you know broader term it is not only like arithmetic calculation it's not only like doing plus minus division but it is more than that now uh, because uh, the definition of computer or computation is also so also broad like you know when we talk about artificial intelligence or deep learning uh, we can see an equivalence uh, between you know uh, our human brain and and then computers so computation again has evolved over time this the definition of computers now it include logical reasoning artificial intelligence or even thought process uh now coming to the types of computers we have two types of computers so one is analog that works with continuous values another one is digital that works with discrete values and and you will see like uh, you know how it makes a difference now understanding uh, the the physics behind the the computer so uh, you know the computers that we work with they work on the newtonian physics or the classical physics but what it is so based on the you know objects uh, physicists have divided mainly like all the objects in in three parts and <clears throat> these three parts could be best understood with uh, three types of physics like you know three not type of physics but uh, three uh, rules or or set of rules defined in physics so this set of rules are called relativistic mechanics quantum mechanics and classical mechanics so the very large object like you know the moon sun nebulas galaxies uh, you know the the behavior of such object could be best understood with the relativity both like uh, spatial relativity and general relativity in spatial relativity we, we mostly talk about like speed you know when it is in comparison with the speed of light but relativistic mechanics involves both now the object which are of the medium size like you know that we deal with every day uh, you know your computer humans uh, buildings insects grains etc so uh, the behavior of such objects could be best understood with the classical mechanics and we also call it uh, you know the newton newtonian mechanics or newton's laws of motion newton's equations uh, what it does it it it, it uh, you know allows you to calculate like you know if if you were given a force and you know what is the initial position of an object like and if a force is applied to it you are able to calculate what would be the you know where that object would be uh, after you know few seconds or few minutes or so but object of very small size and small mass uh, like atom electrons uh, neutrons any 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 sub subatomic particle quarks etc or or energy in fact because mass and energy are equivalent in physics so when we are talking about like something of a small size by that i mean like both mass and energy so when we talk about energy we are talking about photons so so behavior of such objects is best understood with the theory that has been like evolved over a century uh, and and uh, there were multiple like principles have been developed so it has become a framework so this uh, set of rules or this framework we we know it as a quantum mechanics and this is the the best way we have come up with like to to describe the behavior of uh, the subatomic or atomic particles now there are two important difference between classical and quantum mechanics so uh, 
the first thing is is in the word itself like when we say quantum mechanics so how it has started so it has started on a very basic principle very simple to understand that quantum mechanics it does not mean a small it means something indivisible so what uh, you know initially thought was that everything is continuous so what it mean by continuous is the values between 0 and 1 so you can have 0.9 0.8 and then between 0.9 and 0.8 you could have you know 0.85 0.86 and so on so those are like continuous but when you say you could either have 0 or 1 so that is discrete like you know that is uh, something we we call you know uh, comes in packet you know it's, it's kind of uh, uh, if you talk about energy the energy is quantized or the charge is quantized or the angular momentum could is quantized it could be like either up or down so this is what um, uh, the basic uh, building block of of entire quantum mechanics that things uh, you know, or the properties that we measure that comes in chunks so uh, either you have that much or you have nothing so there is no in between Uh, so this is one difference between like you know the the theory uh, of uh, newtonian mechanics or uh, the classical mechanics and quantum mechanics and other important uh, difference is how we measure things so in in quantum mechanics uh, we talk about probabilities so i'll give you an example let's say like if you have a car moving in in a direction uh, with uh, 10 meter per second so after 4 second you could say like you know the car will be at 40 meters from from the origin but in case of an electron moving with the same 10 meter per second speed and after 4 second the way you will ask your question is what is the probability of finding that car at at a location 40 meter away from origin so you are asking about probability means there is a, a intrinsic like uh, you know uh, Uh, randomness or or i would say like uncertainty so that's sorry not randomness but the uncertainty is the better word there's an intrinsic uncertainty about uh, the the uh, value of a property itself so so what you look for is you look for probability and we'll try to understand it more in in next few slides so coming to the quantum mechanics uh, you know in in 19th century there was a good understanding developed upon how uh, electromagnetism work and uh, the the theory or the equation you probably have heard about the the maxwell's equation so maxwell uh, defined the uh, you know electromagnetic waves and uh, he said like the electromagnetic waves are different than mechanical waves it are i mean it is of course it is a wave but it is Uh, instead of uh, you know the the medium the particles of medium going up and down or vibrating it is the electric and magnetic fields which are going up and down which are oscillating perpendicular to each other and uh, uh, when this uh, fields oscillates on a on a particular speed when they gain a speed you know they keep on creating uh, both magnetic and magnetic and electric field perpendicular to each other and this is how a, a electromagnetic wave is formed and it travels so about when we are talking about uh, waves uh, there are two properties of waves one is like uh, you know its uh, wavelength so the wavelength of a wave is uh, equal to the distance between two peaks and uh, other one is frequency so frequency is how many wavelengths are passing uh, you know passing from a point uh, in in a unit time so if uh, you know your wavelength is larger if you know your wavelength is covering large distance then you will have less waves like less wavelengths passing through a point in a given time in a unit time so the frequency will be lower when wavelength is is larger and frequency uh, will become higher if your wavelength is small and that what we see when we you know see the the visible light the the spectrum of electromagnetic waves we see an ultraviolet region here if you can note so this is higher frequency region than visible light uh, you know and then we have the infrared uh, frequency region that is uh, the light uh, with with larger wavelengths and then if we further go 
we can see radio waves which are like even uh, with the larger wavelength so more waves are contained in in um, you know in a specific period of a space and in, in a specific space the more strong or more uh, you know powerful the wave would be so as we have seen like you know we are always wants to away from x ray radiation or uv radiation because it contains like it it has lot of frequency and it contains lot of energy now what happened in, at the end of 19th century and this is how the the you know this concept of quantization um, came in in picture is uh, there uh, you know was an experiment performed with the black body and a black body is something that emits radiation uh, you know it's it, it has some temperature and based on the temperature it emits radiation so when you heat up uh, a material uh, then the amount of radiation that comes out of that material only depends on on its temperature and it was noted that when the experimental data was collected and the, then the classical predictions were made this is the classical prediction what it says that when you increase the temperature you are going to get infinite amount of radiation out of that black body but the data that you see in red green and blue color uh you know the data points on this graph it shows that uh, you know when you you even in fact like you know he, you heat up an uh, particular material of the black body the ultraviolet radiation that comes out of that black body you know it it goes down suddenly so uh, there are all type of radiation you get but ultraviolet radiation is very less uh, and uh, maximum at around 5000 kelvin you maximum get uh, the light in the visible spectrum so the classical theory predicted you know infinite radiation the observations suggest that uh, there is a sudden drop in the uh, when you move to the ultraviolet uh, range and uh, max planck uh, you know uh, he suggested that uh, maybe there is like you know some adjustment we have to make and he introduced a constant called the planck constant and he adjusted e uh, equation such that that energy is not continuous but it comes uh, in in chunks like so there is a like uh, bundle of energy and the energy cannot go lower when he made that change the everything works fine is equation and the experimental results matched so this is how the you you could say it is a birth of quantum uh, mechanics or the birth of quantization then in 1905 albert einstein explained in the photoelectric effect the same thing uh, you know he said like uh, not only the the radiation from black body that is originated from the atomic vibration but also the light uh, that is also quantized the, the light also comes in packets and he, he called it light particle so uh, it was like you know very much well established by that time that light is wave but einstein suggested that maybe it is not wave fully but it is also particle it's like uh, you know the light coming as a as a packet as a bundle so that created some some you know confusion and and debates uh, around the scientific community that time then in 1920 bohr suggested that not only the atomic vibration energy or the light energy that comes in bundles but uh, you know the electrons also follow the same quantization and uh, they revolve around the nucleus in in predetermined uh, you know orbits so this orbits can't be any value like this orbits are some predefined energy values and when electron jump out of uh, one orbit and moves to another orbit we get a photon equal to the the, the difference of energy so uh, everything like that was discussed at time was like whether light is a wave or or then another experiment was performed and i put Uh, a link of same uh, said doctor quantum video very good video i mean everyone should if if you would like to learn you, you should watch that video multiple times it talks about uh, you know an electron passing through double slit and when an electron is a particle but when is it goes through double slit it behaves like waves 
so it it shows interference pattern uh, that is uh, you know not possible with the particle so uh, this type of experiments actually creates lot of questions and uh, that is where like you know the the, the scientific community there that is where like we get an opportunity to explore things that uh, you know explore something new explore things that can describe that behavior so louis de broglie in 1924 he postulated something he said you know maybe uh, everything is a particle as well as a wave but uh, when when things are very small then the the wave nature of that uh, particular thing is more visible he has given a formula that says lambda equal to h divided by p here lambda is the wavelength and p is the momentum so more the momentum is lesser the wavelength is uh, you know and, and uh, vice versa but what he said like you know with the small particles their wavelength is significant so when the wavelength is significant the wave uh, the wave behavior of that uh, object or that particle is more visible but uh, when we we talk about our Uh, you know day to day objects that we interact with maybe a tennis ball the the wavelength of that ball you know comes at around 10 to the power minus 35 meters so that is very small and with a smaller wavelengths we see negligible uh, wave effect so this is this was an important point that the wave particle duality so moving next uh, you know there are some more important uh, uh observations and and principles uh, those were discovered and uh, one of them was uh, stern garlic experiment that showed that uh, the spin of electron is uh, is quantized it can take only two values uh, either up or down that we normally denotes with plus 1 and minus 1 and uh, uh, when you look uh, uh, into the quantum computing the very basic uh, building block of quantum computing or the quantum information qubit uh, when you look at it on the block sphere uh, then you see like the plus and minus on on z axis x axis and y axis so uh, you, you can easily correspond it to what uh, you know stern garlic experiment showed us so either when you take measurement along z axis either you get a plus 1 or minus 1 either you get a state 0 or you get a state one similarly with the when you perform measurement along other axis so uh, moving next next in 1926 uh, schrodinger invented the wave function and uh, on the same year later max born proposed that uh, what we see in schrodinger's equation uh, is is a, a probability wave and schrodinger equation has its own place in in quantum mechanics it's like uh, newton's law of motion uh, like f equal to ma where we put a force on an object we can predict uh, its behavior and here we cannot predict the exact behavior but schrodinger equation allows you to calculate the probabilities so given the current state of a quantum system Uh, you should be able to calculate the probabilities uh, you know if you use schrodinger equation and there are multiple forms of it time dependent time independent however in in quantum computing uh, schrodinger equation is used a lot maybe hidden like you know when you even try to reset a qubit or uh, initialize it this is what we used in in uh, quantum computing we use the schrodinger equation and also in many algorithms uh, you know uh, the schrodinger equation is used uh, so it, it is a good thing to remember and maybe explore it a, a little on on internet uh, you, you will find many articles so next one is our major topic that we are going to discuss the heisenberg's uncertainty principle so it was explained mostly with an example that uh, you know if you would like to Uh, know the complete description of an electron and by complete description i mean the position and momentum for time being let's say that is the complete description then you cannot get that complete description because if you measure the position you will have more uncertainty around the momentum and if you measure mo- momentum then you have more uncertainty around the position the the way it is explained is like you know in order to 
find the location or the position of electron you have to heat it with an photon uh, then only you can precisely calculate but uh, you know this example creates more confusion uh, because uh, people may ask like why should i you know get a, a a measurement on position using a photon maybe there is another way i can get that position so uh, maybe uh, let's let's uh, you know discover it more let's come up with some creativity and see if we can explain it better but the basic thing that it says is uh, you know it is impossible to get the complete description of a quantum object or or a quantum system so in 1982 uh, you know coming to quantum computing from quantum mechanics so in 1982 there was a conference held between many physicists uh, along with uh, dr richard feynman expert from mit and ibm and at the end end of the conference uh, you know dr feynman he suggested uh, that uh, we are trying to uh, you know simulate uh, nature with classical computing and that is insufficient because nature itself does not operate on on uh, classical rules it operates on the rules of it follows the rules of quantum mechanics as long as we understand so why don't we build a device you know based on the principle of quantum mechanics and there we can probably do some manipulation using our engineering techniques and uh, maybe we would be able to to simulate nature better with with quantum mechanics so this is how it started just wanted to check on my piece uh, is it uh, my uh, are you able to understand me dr gandhi are, is the piece okay or shall i reduce it no, Jayesh, it's okay yeah, we are okay. able to follow. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, moving to next slide, uh, the key concepts uh, used in uh, quantum computation. So, there are three, uh, you know, important concepts that we use in quantum computation. Three important quantum mechanics concepts that we use in quantum computations, and these are superposition, uh, interference, and entanglement. So what does it mean by superposition? Superposition means like, uh, you know, when a quantum mechanical object or as I said, uh, you know, in the first slide, the information is physical, right? So if we are talking about classical information, we talk about zero and one. We, so we talk about the voltage, whether the five volt or zero volt. Similarly, in, in quantum computation, we have to have some device, maybe the spin of electrons, whether the spin is up or down. And uh, what happens with the quantum object, they have prop uh, a property that they could remain in multiple states at once. So uh, we say like the electron is spinning, I mean not spinning, but it has a spin up and down. So if, if an electron passes through a magnetic field, then uh, we can observe that it is either going up or down, but as long as it is not uh, going through or it, it, we are not measuring it spin, we are not measuring whether it will go up or down, it remains in both up state and down state. And this has been verified in, in experiments and you, you would know more about those experiments. You could in fact do those experiments using using Qiskit from the ease of your home and, and from your laptop. So uh, the superposition, it says like uh, the, the, the quantum objects can remain and, and represent multiple states simultaneously. And mathematically, uh, you can derive that when you, you write the equation of a qubit, you write, uh, you know, psi equal to uh, some complex number multiplied by zero plus another complex number multiplied by state one. So what you are saying is like uh, that qubit is in both state zero and state one. So there is a probability amplitude associated with state zero. There's probability amplitude associated with state one. It is important to remember and not get confused with two objects. We are talking about one object in two states. We are not talking about two objects. Each one in, is in different state. So those we call, you know, uh, mixed configuration, but we are talking about superposition. Superposition is different from a mixed state. So uh, there's another term that is associated with superposition and it is uh, called the collapse of wave function 
or the collapse of the wave nature uh, and uh, the, the superposition is is due to the the wave nature of uh, uh, of the quantum object um, because uh, it's the waves they can like you know uh, superimposed on each other but when we look at uh, you know if if we talk about the dual slit experiment with electron and um, when you know we are not sure uh, what path an electron is taking whether the electron is going through the first slit or the second slit uh, it remains in superposition and it shows us an interference pattern at the at the back of the screen but if we put a, a detector device on one of the slit uh, and then we we do not see any interference what we see is like you know only two bars and it is because of the collapse of wave function so so collapse of wave function says that if you make a measurement of uh, a, a quantum object it will uh, you know take one of the possible values so in in qubit there are only two possible values spin up or spin down or zero or one so if you are not looking at it it is in both zero and one when you look at it it, it will either become a zero in a state zero or in state one it will either become a spin up or spin down so i uh, i would also like to mention about the the many world interpretation uh, you know that does not believe in the collapse of wave function but the way it describes the behavior that uh, you know on taking measurement you either get a zero or one or up or down it says like if you you uh you know take the measurement of an electron going through a magnetic field uh, or a, a if you perform a measurement on a qubit if you see a zero then uh, there is a like one happening in another universe so it like you know like the science fiction movies it, it talks about the the concept of multiverse and it is mathematically it has been proven that it it may be possible so why i uh, you know talked about it is like if we look at many world interpretation it is easy to understand the the functioning of quantum computers so in quantum computers we can have parallel computations at the same time and this parallel computations are are happening in in multiverse you know in the different universes uh, each taking like uh, one logical path or or uh, you know it, it taking maybe same logical path with different input values so we, we can perform the same computation on on different set of values however uh, the superposition does not give you like any advantage because things are happening in in multiverse you do not have a control on on another universe so what we do sorry about that So sorry about that. So in, uh, in you know, with just only many world interpretation, uh, we cannot get any benefit. So let, let let's talk about the interference. That is the the second important quantum mechanical concept uh, used in quantum computation. And uh, what uh, interference tells us is like when you have uh, you know waves. superimposed on each other and if the the crest or the peak of one wave falls on the peak of another wave then you get an increase in amplitude and if if things happens otherwise if the the peak of one wave uh, you know falls on the crest of another wave then you get destructive interference so in in quantum computation um, uh, we have phases associated with each state so as i said like you know particles behaves like waves so similarly uh, we can think of uh, a system in in different states as like different waves you know so if 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 a system could remain in state 0 and 1 there are waves associated uh, with uh, with uh, a level 0 and level 1 and if we have you know two waves uh, associated with with level 0 we can see if those two waves are in phase if those are in phase then we are going to see a boost in the probability of getting state 0 if if we you know in case of state 1 if we have like uh, 
two waves associated with state one, but those are like with opposite phase, then state one is going to be canceled. And, and you can do that. You can see that uh, by simply putting like, you know, two, three gates in, uh, in Qiskit, you can put an header mark, then, then you can actually uh, put a phase gate in between, and then you can uh, put another header mark there and play around that, like adjust the phase. And then you see like uh, how the zero state uh, is getting strength or how one state is, is uh, losing uh, probability amplitude. So those are like good uh, exercises to do and it will, it will give you uh, a better understanding of uh, both superposition and interference. So one thing to, to keep in mind is like without interference or, or the phase uh, in, in uh, quantum computing, uh, there is no advantage of it. Like, you know, you, you, if you cannot interfere the, uh, the waves associated with different states, you cannot take any advantage uh, of parallel computing that is happening in multiverse. Uh, the next point is entanglement and entanglement could be described uh, uh, with uh, you know, lot of there are a lot of definitions of entanglement, but the best way I found is to define it as a correlation between uh, you know multiple quantum objects. So let's say if you have two quantum objects and those are entangled, uh, those are correlated in such a manner that when you perform observation on on one quantum object, you come to know about the same property of. Uh, same property or the same information associated with the second object. So you take measurement, you have A and B entangled. You take measurement on A and uh, you measured its spin in along the x-axis. You, you come to know the spin along x-axis for uh, another particle, another uh, quantum system or electron that is named as B. So entanglement has like several application, um, you know, a, it's, it's, uh, it is most used in, um, at this moment, uh, it is being used in qu quantum key distribution. It's like a security protocol. So what we do, like, you know, we, we generate entangled particle, we send it, uh, you know, one to, to Bob and one to Alice, and then we try to come up with a secure key. And um, principally, no one should be able to, to look at uh, those keys due to uncertainty principle. So, uh, you know, things in quantum computing are, are not hype, as you might have seen like some videos. There are some real ongoing uh, real world applications. Uh, the governments around the globe are, are investing uh, a lot, uh, you know, China, India, Russia, Australia, US, they are investing a lot in, in um, quantum computing just because uh, of, of the, the quantum key distribution or just because it could give you a, a, you know, a protocol that no one can break, right? So it is, it is a, a protocol that is protected by the laws of nature. Um, so this is just, and this is, uh, you know, quantum key distribution is just a very, simple and um, you know practical example so when you see a video about the quant hype on quantum computing don't just believe on it uh, check things uh, you know by yourself so uh, coming back to entanglement uh, entanglement is not only used in in um, secure key distribution but it is also used in almost every quantum algorithm what you do like you prepare two sets uh, uh, of qubits and you measure uh, you entangle those two sets or registers and you take a measurement on one register and when you take the measurement on one register you come to know uh, what uh, you know are the possible outcomes on on other set of registers so in short uh, quantum algorithms are designed to execute uh, you know all possible computational path and it cancels out the undesirable. Yeah, sorry about that. So it, it uh, cancels out, uh, you know, the undesired pass and it boosts the probability of getting uh, the right or desired outcome. And let me just put it once again. Yeah, 
so is, is it visible sorry i i was just trying to move a box yes, is it, okay thank you so coming to evolution of quantum computing uh, as i mentioned before it's it was conceptualized around 1980 and then um, there were progress made uh, on on cm in 1994 uh, uh, peter shore he showed that uh, you know it is possible to uh, break the rsa uh, encryption using using quantum computation and then that gathered a lot of attention and and money required for research in the year 2000 there was a you know company was formed named d wave uh, it is the first company who actually sold uh, the very first quantum computing machine to uh, to, to someone in US, I, I forgot the name, as, as an um, company that deals with the fighter aircraft. So uh, there, there was a lot of money started flowing in um, uh, from after year 1994, and then DOA was formed in year 2000. And then uh, in 2016, as IBM was already working on, on this technology from 1982, in 2016, IBM actually put the real quantum computer on cloud. So uh, the, the major development and interest and like community building started after 2016. And now, uh, you know, just five years after, and you probably have heard Brian, uh, I'm not sure if there was a session from Brian, but he, he mentioned that, uh, you know, now we have uh, millions of users, like uh, those are, are using those are trying to to build community uh, find algorithm across the globe so that is a big development so we are going to look at uh, uncertainty principle and and our uh, remaining part of this session so uh, I'll, shall i just stop for the questions or like we are going to deal with questions at the end now we have uh, question answers at the end Jesh. Okay, thank you. So I'll, I'll move ahead with the, uh, you know, the session. So before we uh, take a look at uncertainty principle, like uh, what it is and how it works, I'd like to revisit a couple of uh, terms like the probability and randomness. So for same, like I'll take a real life example. Uh, you know, maybe uh, when we make a plan, let, let's say a, a real time example that uh, we created, let's, let's say you woke up one day and you created a plan to, to go for picnic. And it's a, it's a very bright sunny day and uh, it is a pleasant day. Um, you have made a detailed plan that like, you know, you, you will uh, visit and so and so restaurant, you will pick food there or uh, you are going to visit uh, that particular sightseeing uh, location and then you are going to take that route and do so and so what are the chances that like you are going to fulfill that plan so you could say like maybe 99 percent based on the experience because if a day start pleasant uh, there are like very much chances that like it will remain pleasant so and and you should be able to perform what you are doing but maybe there could be an, an engine problem in your car or maybe there are uh, is some emergency from office or family that may disrupt your plan. So, so the the way you can think of it, uh, you know, mathematically, you could say like, you know, maybe 99% um, chances are there that like I'll be able to fulfill my plan, and there's a 1% chance of failure. So let's uh, mark it as like you know the things uh, will happen as you planned as success and things that. Uh, things will not go as you planned as failure. So in, in uh, our picnic example, the chances of success is 99 out of 100 and uh, chances of failure is, is one, one out of uh, 100. So, you know, what does it mean by like, you know, uh, 99 out of 100? It tells us like, or the 99%, what does it mean? It, it says like, you know, if we repeat the same plan or the same experiment 100 times, and then 99 uh, times we are going to be okay like you know we we will get a success and one time there may be some 
uh, emergency or some other reason because of that we won't be able to uh, fulfill our plan but if we we think uh, if we think further if we think deep uh, is like you know repeating um, that uh, particular experiment 100 times will give you an an exact results is like every time you repeat 100 times you will get uh, 99 times you get success and one time you get failure it is not like that right i mean sometimes you might have to repeat it like uh, 1000 times or 10000 times uh, to to see the pattern like to see the chances to get the chances and and chances are are nothing but it is like the measure of probability right so uh, if if you repeat an experiment let's say 1000 times and it may happen that all 1000 times you get success but but if you repeat it like 10000 times then then only you would be able to get uh, you know uh, the the failure and success both so how many times you will have to really repeat an experiment to get a good idea of uh, or or to get a probability of success and failure so it it, uh, it turns out that like you you might have to you know repeat an experiment infinite number of times but in in uh, practical world you could just like you know repeat a, a plan or experiment uh, very large number of times and the number of times you have to repeat depends on how far uh, your uh, you know probabilistic results are so if if uh, in simple words if like you are tossing a coin and and the the results are like 50% head and 50% tail then it might be just sufficient to toss that coin for 10 times right now i mean out of 10 times you may get 4 or 6 and if you do it like 50 times that is enough but let's say like there is a chance of failure is 0.001 uh, percent right so in that case uh, you will have to do more repetition to to get uh, the exact probability and and this is what is is encoded in in nature right that uh, uh, you know even the distant and distant uh, possibilities could happen may realize there is a chance maybe that chance is as a very minute like in in our example there may be a chance that like you know uh, a comet uh, fall from the sky and that will disrupt your plan so that that chance is is very minute but still there is a chance right and and that is what happens when we talk about an individual experiment when we we do not consider like you know the group of experiment but uh, when when we talk about an an single isolated experiment then anything could happen and this uh, anything is is basically the the element of surprise that we cannot avoid this is inbuilt in nature and this is what become more visible when when we study smaller and smaller particles when we study smaller particles like uh, this uncertainty become more and more visible so the the way like the outcome of an individual experiment remain random uh, it it gives a uh you know framework of of uncertainty and that is what uh, we we try to explore more with an you know thought experiment <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so uh we will do a thought experiment in which uh, we will take uh, you know a, a coin and uh, we will call it an uh, like exotic coin that's a special coin and uh, we will try to get its complete description so this coin has two properties uh, the the first property it has is its color and the second property it has is its temperature right uh, so we devise two type of measurement to to get it color and temperature and remember we this is an a coin uh, exotic coin that we are not going to toss but we are taking it uh in place of electron because um i found it uh, more uh, you know intuitive or more explainable if i take a coin instead of electron and i go after its position and momentum so like uh, electron's position and momentum uh, this coin has two properties the color and temperature for color it can have two values uh, either it could be red or green and for temperature it could have two colors uh, sorry two uh, temperature two values the warm and cold 
so color could be red and green red or green and temperature could be warm or cold so uh, since it's a you know uh, exotic coin we cannot uh, uh, look at it and and feel it at the same time so we have to define two measurements the first measurement we define is mc to measure color and it is uh, for this measurement we will simply rely on our eyes and uh, we look at it we see whether it is a red or green uh, for other measurement uh, we will use our touch sense we are going to touch we cannot look and touch at the same time because these are two different measurements uh, this properties are mutually exclusive uh, you know in, in terms of physics so so we touch that and we feel whether it is warm or cool so so let's try to get the accurate value for both of these properties and if we are able to get accurate values of both these properties it means like we have got the complete description so uh, initially we looked at the coin uh, it looked uh, red so we have noted down that uh, the color of our coin is red then we use another setup and this time we touch the coin so we found it warm so we have written our observation here like the color is red and uh, the temperature is warm right here and and uh, we we just wanted to make sure that whatever we have recorded uh, still stands right so so what we did is we um, noted uh, you know we would like to observe the the temperature again so we have again like touched the coin and we found it warm so so we are like now confident that okay uh, temperature is warm the value of temperature is warm the value of color is red but what happens like you know we wanted to be double sure that like the color is is really red and when we looked at the coin when we use the mc experiment again then we can find uh, that that particular coin as red or green with equal probabilities so every time we take a measurement of temperature we reset the color and every time we you know uh, take the measurement of color we reset the temperature and and you can actually if you will go through this table you would be able to understand it better that uh, taking the measurement of one aspect disturbs the other it is it is like a you know a square balloon and the width and and the height of the balloon um, is the measure of the uncertainty so if you can reduce the uncertainty on uh, on the properties associated with horizontal axis then balloon is going to expand vertically so you you will be more uncertain like in case here if we measure the temperature we will be uncertain about what the color would be and if we measure the color we will be uncertain about what the temperature would be so this analogy of uh, this coin we can correlate it uh, with uh, the electrons uh, position and momentum or electrons spin in in a particular uh, axis like either the x axis or z or x or y more we have idea about like if we take a measurement uh, on um, of the spin along the x axis uh, then we will have no idea what would be the spin along the z axis so uh, you know in the next slide actually i i showed it uh, on the block sphere and uh, basically what you see here if my pointer is visible that which with each spin like along the z or x or y axis there is a value that is like plus 1 and and minus 1 so plus 1 we call is associated with state 0 or or state plus or state plus i and and this three axis as you could see like you know if i'll measure the spin along z axis and if the electron is going like that there's a magnet here uh, in in the z orientation and then electron let's say it has moved upward so it says like its spin is plus one and it is in state zero uh, as far as our quantum information is concerned then if we look at this block sphere representation uh, we we find that like you know now we have no idea of uh, uh, electron uh, what's the electron spin along the y axis is and what the electron spin along z axis so the z axis is coming you know out of a screen uh, so 
similar thing happen like you know if if you make a measurement along x axis or if you make a measurement along y axis then uh, you will find that you you lose all the information about the electron's spin uh, you know across an uh, other perpendicular axis so maybe it is like uh, you know too much uh, for uh, you know for the session but but uh, uh, i mean you can give it a try what uh, i i wanted to communicate is like this kind of stuff that that you know dr richard feynman once thought that we will be able to perform the experiments on uh, our our computers you know uh, it's like doing a, a real lab experiment so you can do this kind of experiment using ibm uh, cascade software uh, the cascade uh, sdk and uh, what you could do like you know you can take a measurement along uh, z axis and then just by putting an hadamard gate you can change that measurement to taking measurement along x axis so uh, maybe you can give it a try and if required i i'll put uh, you know an, an example of same and and discard so uh, you know i i probably yeah so uh, i'll i'll just uh, you know conclude this session with with couple of observations that uh, you know we have gathered uh, from this experiment is like the first observation is uh, when we worked with this exotic coin um, or or if we work with electrons spin or position and momentum one thing is very clear that uh, we are prohibited Uh, from getting the complete description so so there is a fundamental limit and this limit is not uh, on the way we perform measurement the the way we we this limit is not imposed to like you know how we are taking the measurement but it is a fundamental law of nature that we are prohibited of knowing uh, you know mutually exclusive properties or uh, properties that makes the complete description of of a quantum object and this is what the uncertainty principle is and this is why someone wise has said that we now know that we will never know what we will never know is is the complete description of of a quantum object the other thing that is visible uh, from uncertainty principle is uh, uh, that like you know when we look at uh, the measurement of a spin along along z axis we see like you know now we we can uh, get either a, a plus or minus state or with we can either get a plus i or minus i state with equal probability when we convert uh, you know this this probability of a state to wave nature or to waves uh, then we see we can mathematically write it and i'm not sure if you are able to see the formula down below but uh, when we mathematically formulate it it tells us the principle of superposition so it tells that if you are taking a measurement along the z axis and if if result is maybe either 0 or 1 now you have equal probability of getting uh, plus 1 or minus 1 along y axis or plus 1 or minus 1 along along x axis so this is what the a uh, principle of superposition is this is how we mathematically form uh, or write the superposition so at the you know and uh, like we can define the quantum computing uh, based on the knowledge we have gathered until now that the quantum computing is a device that take benefit of superposition and the quantum programs that we write uh, for for this devices it take uh, advantage of of interference it also take advantage of entanglement but it uh, for our purpose here it takes you know um, advantage of of phases and uh, the programs we write in those programs we try to to cancel out uh, phases of uh, to cancel out the waves of uh, probabilities of undesired outcome and and we would like to get a constructive interference for uh, you know waves uh, which are associated with our desired state or the desired solution so there are uh, many applications of quantum computing as i mentioned like uh, security uh, cyber security is is one of them and uh, there are application in almost uh, 
uh, every field of uh, you know science and and mechanical engineering or even in like finance you can uh, use quantum computers to to get uh, a optimized portfolio or you know you can actually calculate the optimized return so the the, the possibilities are are limitless uh, yeah i i wanted to quote i so i'm sorry i i don't remember the name of a physicist but he said like you know uh, the quantum computing the power of quantum computing is electric is is equivalent to the power of electricity you know so before electricity like everything was run on steam right uh, so electricity changed the things like the the way uh, things were were mechanically uh, performed so similarly like quantum computing is going to leave an impact on almost uh, all the fields of uh, you know it's not only science uh, but but you know almost all the fields that we deal with in our daily life and we are at the very beginning uh, we are at the initial phase uh, so uh, and you probably have seen this uh, picture and and many presentations related with quantum computing but this is how the classical computer looked like in in 1950s and this is how like our quantum computer looks like so it looks you know even better uh, we are still in the in the same era of development but uh, yeah hopefully we'll uh, make uh, a lot of progress in in coming year with the launch of you know IBM's uh, 1000 qubit computers things may change and it it may never look back so that's all i have and uh, i'm ready for any questions if there are any participants uh, if you have any questions you can uh, ask in the chat box Jayesh, how how could we motivate younger people to start working on quantum? Actually, what will you do? Well, uh, you know, and this is why I mentioned about uh, uh, this videos people post, like you know the hype and all that. So it actually, when you look at those videos, you think like you know, quantum computing is not going to come. And I have had like you know discussions with people. Um, who says like you know no it is not going to happen we won't be able to exploit that because there's a limitation by nature and all that and uh, we'll have to look at the history and and uh, you know the way uh, the classical computers have made impact so initially it was thought that it is going to be difficult because people were working with like you know walls and after the transistor was invented everything has progressed so it is it is actually uh, you know maybe just one uh, invention in 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 engineering or one discovery uh, may change the things and it, it give us it give it a a pace uh, that is required uh, and uh, this is why i said like uh, you know the applications are not limited to one field so no matter like you know whether uh if you are a chemical engineer or or uh, you are a biology student um, there will be an application of quantum computing or whether you are a, a, you know you are studying finance uh so this is a good motivation right and and the way things have prog progressed after 2016 um you know it is just a matter of um, matter of realization of hardware you have algorithms you know you have uh, software in place uh, you have uh, coders like the people who who can code and analyst in place so entire ecosystem is there what we are waiting for is an hardware and it's not only ibm you know uh, which is working on on hardware uh, but there are many companies and if we read about like you know people are trying to come up with with innovative ideas like using photon computers so using like photons inside a chip so they are mixing the semiconductor uh, with like uh, with light and uh, 
some companies do not like disclose their progress so uh, i think uh, this is the right time to enter in this space if you would like to become a leader for for anyone you know for people and for organization uh, and i have been following this space from long time like you dr gandhi so i and i i did conduct the the first training uh, in my organization in uh, year 2012 so people uh, you know you, they used to laugh at me <laughs> actually but uh, they said like you know it's it's not going to happen uh, so there there you know uh, i am optimistic and uh, we are going to see this change in coming years yeah jayesh even i had the same experience when i <laughs> yeah they suggested we drop this field and start working on some other field actually so for then you right. sharen we have some questions ma you can yes uh, yes sir. so there is a question from srikant mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, he asked the relationship between quantum computer and cyber security sir okay so uh, you know what uh, when we talk about the security over internet uh, so we use a protocol uh, named as rsa like so that's uh, based on a mathematical framework uh, so if you can break uh, you know that protocol then then um, your all your financial transactions or you know the documents the confidential documents or uh, things happening in a war place uh, if you can just uh, break the rsa algorithm uh, in in a time bound manner uh, that will become public right and um, that is nobody wants that right so so you need not rsa but something that can take any type of cyber attack that can you know uh, not only immune uh but uh, that can also tell you that like there has been a software attack so so you will become proactive also so that is where like quantum computing helps and in our country uh, you know drdo uh, and and uh, also now there was a conference few days back in in mahu m h o w where uh, you know things were discussed around like implementing this uh, qkd uh, the quantum key distribution for the military applications because any new technology is first adopted by military so that that is a rule unwritten rule so uh, this is how this two are related uh, the quantum computing has potential to uh, you know break the the existing security and if you it it also provides you a solution if you use like quantum key distribution uh, nobody would be able to break it and also if somebody will try to break it like you would get an an idea so this is how uh, it is related with the cyber security i hope thank i answered you, yeah yes thank you sir and we have one more question from siddharth uh, he asked that uh, how would an electron look like Uh, suppose we manage to take a photograph of it and uh, would we be able to understand its wave like behavior by looking at it yeah i mean uh, this is why like this type of questions are not allowed in quantum mechanics you know <laughs> so electron is 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 a wave uh, right and uh, nobody has uh, seen the electron what what you see actually is is a probability cloud uh, and that is also mathematically calculated so uh, you know how it will look like or uh, whether there is an electron or whether there is an ocean of uh, uh, you know what we call the the field of electron so in you know whatever we have learned in in our school or or colleges it may be lie right because maybe things are different but but uh, you know maybe the the way now uh, this quantum field theory or like uh, the uh, you know quantum electrodynamics the way it describes the nature is is uh, you know very different from what we have learned but what we have learned is is uh, you know experimentally verified not exactly that there is an electron but we know we have experimentally verified that there is an effect of electron there is an effect 
of something that has charge uh, you know 9.1 into 10 to the power uh, sorry the, the mass of 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg and charge of 1.6 and something like 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so that thing is there but we do not know if that thing is a particle or uh, it, it is just a manifestation of some vibration and in, in uniform electron field now now with the qft uh, physicist says that there is a uniform field associated with each particle like uh, like electron like quarks and and when we say like we have felt and i'm not saying we have seen we have felt an electron it is just a manifestation of the vibration on on this like uh, uniform field that is that is there uh, so this is why like uh, you know i mean i'll give you a very simple example uh, you know 2 and minus 2 is 0 right but uh, in mathematics i can create two objects out of nothing plus 2 and minus 2 0 is nothing plus 2 and minus 2 so this is what the mathematics is and and it it creates things out of nothing it does not make sense right but uh, mathematically it is possible right you can create two entities plus two and minus two uh, and this is how universe works it works on the mathematics and that has been proven again and again if you look at uh, like the relativity the the space is getting curved uh, you know the time dilations this, these are all counterintuitive things in, in uh, electrons at like multiple place or, or entanglement. This is all mathematics. As long as mathematics says that it is possible, things happen. Now, now I'm not saying that like, you know, maybe there is a simulation. We are living in a simulation and, and that simulation is, is uh, using some mathematical equations. So I'm not saying that, but maybe that is what is happening. There is a possibility. So in short, uh, yeah, I mean, when you say like how it looks like, this question, um, you know, is not correct. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we have one more question from Akwail. Uh, how is quantum computers linked with business students? Oh, yeah, that, that's a very good question, right? You know, I mean, as I said, and I remember something at talk, then when they say term quant so quant uh, uh, if you are in business or finance you know quant is what uh, measurement right this is how this is a, a basic term in, in finance uh, and what you try to do is like you try to quantify things like you try to quantify you know if i am going to buy this asset this asset uh, what would be the value of this asset in future so how you look at it, you, you look at it based on like, you know, the past experience, the past values of that asset. Uh, maybe it is a, is a property or land or maybe uh, equity, uh, liquid assets. Uh, then the, the uh, one way is to look at is like, you know, the artificial intelligence you apply, uh, which this world is driven by random events. Nobody had thought about COVID, right? Nobody had thought about the disruptions that we are seeing in, in today's world. So uh, you can make like using uh, maybe Monte Carlo simulation or, or something else based on, um, and this is one of the project I suggested like uh, to, to someone that right now, you know, this, this simulation that we do based on, on the random numbers, let's try to get the real random numbers out of quantum computer right because uh, that is only the real numbers otherwise uh, no, no they, we do not have the the real uh, random numbers uh, using we cannot get it using python or classical computation so one thing is like you know uh, in finance uh, when you would like to to understand what would be the value of your asset or what would be the value of your portfolio given random things will happen you know given like uh, the the past data given the fluctuations in market uh, what is the best uh, possible portfolio you can get uh, to to maximize your profit or um, you know there are cycles in in finance like when you trade uh, uh, let's say one currency to other 
so there are uh, you know mathematically it is possible every time you you convert your currency you lose money because you pay commission so if you convert dollar to rupees or rupees to pounds but there are reverse cycles possible in mathematics and finding those reverse cycle is an np hard problem is it is a mathematics again it's, it's a mathematical problem using quantum computers if you could solve that problem you can do the reverse cycle it does not mean that you you know again go back to the same money but but uh, there there is a theory and uh, there is a proof to that theory that you can in fact do the reverse cycle and make money out of it but this problems are np hard if you try to solve this using classical computers it's going to take years so these are like uh, you know one of many application otherwise like you know you can if you are doing a business of like shipping you can find the the base route where you have to spend you know the fuel is very costly nowadays so so you have to you know spend very less on fuel and still you would be able to cover uh, all the all the shipping addresses so these are all optimization how much you should buy how much you can keep in your warehouse uh, you know what to do with the items these are all mathematical problems these are all optimization problems and quantum computers can you know find the best solution that a classical computer cannot find in a reasonable time thank you sir so i guess that's all with the question and answers um, so thank you so much sir for imparting your knowledge with us and sharing your experiences and enlightening yeah, sure. us thank you so much sir thank uh, you very much. Yeah, Jayesh, thanks a lot. On behalf of our management, we would like to thank you for uh, giving such a wonderful session. Thank you once again, Jayesh. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Bye bye now. Yeah, bye. Participants, yes. Uh, participants, if you have any doubts regarding this session or the upcoming sessions, please do mail us. Um, the mail will be available on Discord as well as on Hype. Um, so after leaving this meet, you will receive a feedback form through mail and it's also shared in the chat box. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you would uh, fill that up so that uh, the insights would be uh, better for us for improving the next sessions. Uh, the next session will be conducted tomorrow at 10 a.m. It's about quantum safe cryptography by Ms. Gucha Malik, ma'am. Uh, so that's all, guys. Uh, the link for today's uh, this session the recording will be shared in the Discord. If In case you missed any part of it, you can just access that. So that's it, guys. Um, thank you for connecting with us and have a great day ahead.